Good evening and welcome to the Indie Voice Show, where artists can listen, learn, and grow with knowledge empowering success. And now, here is your host, singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, Miss Wendy Hicks. I know you guys were anxiously waiting to tune into the Indie Voice Show. I know you logged in at 5 o'clock and said, where is Wendy? Here I am. Here I am. I am joined by Owen Adams. Welcome, Owen. Thank you. Good to be here. So, you know, for those of you that are new to the show, Indie Voice is a show that will provide information and resources for Those of you, those artists that um, need help, if you're at some point in your project where you want to start a project and don't know what to do, you've started your project, you have a product in hand, now what? What do I do as far as marketing and branding and all of that? We try to provide as much information and access to resources as we possibly can. That being said, it is just wonderful that Owen is here joining me today because He has a wealth of information and knowledge that he would like to share on the music business. And it's like, we have so much to cover. I mean, I, you know, we're going to do what we can, but, um, you know, we have opened the phone lines for those of you that have questions. You want to call in with questions. Um, again, uh, I, I have coined you uh, musician extraordinaire. I hope you don't mind. I mean, you have a wealth of hats because you produce, you write, you play, you, record, mix, master, and all of that, so. Well, that's the evil uh, word, versatility. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing you can be nowadays. <laughs> yes, and Owen was born into a family full of musical lineage and has studied the music business again for quite some time. He's going to share what he's learned over the years. Um, again, we have so much to discuss that will empower our indie artist community with knowledge and information about the industry. Also, we're going to find out what he's doing to bridge the gap between local artists, which I think is, is pretty cool. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But before we get started with that, I want to, um, we're going to go into the Have You Heard segment. And normally I play videos for those artists that I want to share with you, some that are brought to my attention by, you know, folks that watch the show. But those and others are people that I find as I'm researching. So today we're going to play a video. It's actually one of Owen's videos, and it's a compilation. It's a best of compilation of some of um, his videos and songs, you know, throughout what the year or. Yes, and this is a first time video premiering right on this show. It's the first place you're going to see it. Um, it's actually a compilation of the last six months. Okay. So, yes. All right. So let's check this out. Come on now, follow my lead. Mm-hmm. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. Although my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room. And now my bed sheets smell like you. Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with your body. Thank you. 
up, y'all? Owen Adams, Happy Halloween. This song's about the Bowie Goat Man. If you ain't heard about him, you go ahead and Google it. Goat Man's back. This time he's here to stay. Goat Man's back. He's got something to say. Goat Man's back. Well, the gift that I won doesn't cost a lot It's easy for him to bring The gift that I won, it's right on his sleigh Why can't he bring it to me? A gift of love that you give me A gift so pure and true My Christmas wish And we're back. We're back. First thing I want to talk about is a great video. Thank you. Just a quick summary over the last six months. That's a lot in six months. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> With a little help from my friends, you know. Yes. Let's talk about first, you know, I saw that shape of you, the whole video when you released it um, initially. I love that. So how did that collaboration come about? Okay, so me and Laura actually went to high school together a million years ago. And um, she was always in the drama department and singing and dancing and doing all this kind of stuff. So I, was, I remembered that. And mm -hmm. then many years later, like this past year, I was browsing through YouTube and I actually found some of her like recent videos. I was mm -hmm. like, wow, like Laura's still doing it mm -hmm. and putting her own music out there and originals and covers. So I hit her up and I was like, hey, would you be interested in singing a lead on this song? It's like a Chuck Brown tribute. Like it's really like central to DC music. And I think people around here would really love that. Yes. And it would, I think it'd be a good look for her because she moved to Chicago to kind of do a go-go song and kind of be like, you know, I'm, I'm from DC. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of makes it cool, like, you know, to bring us back together, uh -huh. <laughs> even though we're a million miles apart now. So right. it's just an excuse for me to work with Laura. It's this amazing vocalist. So. Wow. So yeah. moving forward, you said you do something as a, as a Chuck Brown tribute annually. So you, do you have your song selected for the next one? 
I was thinking about doing a song called Cake by Melanie Martinez because here's the thing I like to pick songs that are a little bit quirky and a little bit weird uh -huh. and then make them even more weird just crank it up to, to like 10 mm -hmm. um, so I don't know maybe it's just one of those weird kind of really heavy grooving songs but I don't know it might change it might change I'm not like on a strict schedule or something okay okay so I kind of got ahead of myself let's talk a little bit about first who you are as a musician and then we'll get into sure. the, the educational part right of it so you've been playing started lessons at the age of four and and i mentioned earlier you come from a very musical family so it's just natural natural progression for you to take up an instrument absolutely yeah um had no choice yeah well i i kind of grew up in a recording studio i joke with people that like 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 that was the uh table where I was born onto it was it like a mixing <laughs> console um, but yeah I was just always around it my dad always had musicians in the room and I'd just be like playing with my cousin or something like five feet away and he'd have musicians and they'd be talking about flat nines and sharp sevens and <laughs> all this crazy things about music theory that I was kind of getting uh, subconsciously so I was just kind of around that always mm -hmm. and then me and my cousin grew up and started recording our own little things using all of the same equipment and so it, it was like this foundation. And I think that like pretty much everybody has the ability to play something. They have some sort of musical thing intrinsic to them. But I'm very fortunate that my parents uh, kind of created that environment for me to sort of experiment and like be, be creative on my own and not have sort of a bunch of restrictions and you know stop making a noise and all this kind of stuff so yeah mm -hmm. well shout out to mom and dad thank absolutely. you absolutely yes um and it says that you you kept practicing during middle school and high school and was good enough to win first place in many of the local and statewide classical piano competitions um you auditioned live at a few universities and received full four-year tuition scholarships from howard towson and university of maryland Wow, and you chose University of Maryland with a degree in music composition. By the way, just uh, in case anybody was still convinced that there's no money in music, $80,000 in college tuition, you know. <laughs> that you didn't have to worry. <laughs> there you go. Amen to that. Um, and what I, what I really thought was interesting, your reason for choosing a music composition versus performance was because you felt that the most valuable skill is your ability to create new music and weave past and present influences into fresh works of sound. I like that. Yeah, because I always say like you can't create music in a vacuum, so you, you need to know your history, you need to know about a little bit about classical music, a little bit about uh, you know the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you're creating something that's part of the story. You're just making stuff that just breaks every single rule it doesn't follow anything it it it, it, it just it, it doesn't have that kind of context mm -hmm. so i'm always paying attention to especially local artists and i want to hear what everybody's doing i want to see their videos i want to hear their music and see like what's going on around me mm -hmm. currently mm -hmm. and then you can go from there and create music for the future mm -hmm. so. okay so it says you um, compose music for various university groups, and then fast forward, I mean, you did a lot. You did a lot musically in school, and then fast forward. Now you're teaching piano at your studio in Bowie, and you um, continue with your music ministry at Adams United Methodist Church and Largo Community Church. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I think it's important for any musician, no matter what you play, get into church and. Even if it's a tuba, be like, hey, you know, I'm a gospel tuba player. <laughs> and you, what, you, what it does is it gives you a gig. It gives you something to prepare for and perform every single week so that you're, you don't get, you know, sloppy. You don't get lazy with it because you're always on every single Sunday, and especially at Largo. I'm on at, you know, 9 a.m. on the dot. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it forces you to maintain a certain amount of, of technique and ability so yeah right. play in, in churches absolutely okay right. all right and then we go on to talk about your 10th studio album and we talked in depth about this which i thought was really interesting it's manifesto it's a tribute to great keyboard players who inspired you at a young age but what i also thought was intriguing about this is that you did everything on this project yes played um recorded mixed mastered everything yeah, it's, it's kind of the first time that I did all of that 
on my own because at any point before like a year or two ago like my mixing skills weren't really there and like I tell people just work with what you got keep like make the best of whatever situation you have mm -hmm. and it's the 10th studio album but <laughs> there's a lot of garbage on the other nine that came before <laughs> so this is the first time I really put like a hundred percent into every single track like there's no filler everything has lyrics and bridges and hooks and, and all that so like work with what you got and eventually you keep doing it you stay consistent with it and you, you get to a point where your skill sort of it, it sort of does itself. The mm -hmm. song kind of records itself after a while because you've done it so many times. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's it. There's no magic pill. There's no magic plug-in you can put on it that's going to make your mix right. sound good. You know, everybody's like, oh, we'll just get it in the mix or we'll get it in the mastering stage. It's like, no, the master is basically your mix just turned up a couple dBs. Like, if your mix is suffering, it's not going to work right. yeah, to, the, to the end of the completion of the project. So mm -hmm. just work with what you got. Okay. That's all I'm so that's, the, that's the underlying <laughs> message. Pretty much. So before we go um, into break, I want to talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about your passion for the, in, I call it passion for the independent artistry. And um, specifically, there was an article that you wrote on Facebook this past week, and I'm going to actually copy it and post it on the Indie Voice fan page. Um, and it covers... You know, as far as marketing, and even it, it even touches on budget, um, talks about, you know, social media, how to better utilize social media. And it talks about being unique and, you know, offering something different. So the first question, again, um, the article was, you were strict, this was strictly your observations after studying music business, sales figures, social media marketing, and indie artists or band online success stories over the past 10 years. So in terms of helping an artist to develop or identify with their uniqueness, how would you, how would you recommend they go about that? Okay, so you're trying to identify your uniqueness. You're trying to figure out what is it that you do that's different from everybody else like, what do you do best? What makes your style what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, for instance, like, the, out of the past, like, 50, 100 songs that I've written, um, you, when you go back and reflect on your older music, you'll start to pick up certain things and be like, okay, that really worked, that didn't. Mm -hmm. And so for me, for instance, I go back and look at the lyrics that I wrote from, you know, 2007 and eight around that time, and out of maybe 20 songs, there's one or two that are like definitely they rise above the rest mm -hmm. and it's like well what is that so you have to study yourself and like i'm saying for me it was the sort of sarcastic sort of quirky humor in the lyrics which i kind of picked up from studying guys like frank zappa mm -hmm. and even like um like rappers like uh like afro man and stuff like guys that kind of tell jokes but they're still making bomb music mm -hmm. So I, that was kind of my thing. Little sarcasm, little humor, little irony, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody has a different thing. Like you had uh, Strength and Power on last week. Like yes. to me, their thing is super smooth uh, vocals, and really powerful, tight harmonies. And, and funk. And, and funk, exactly. <laughs> but you, you, you put those powerful harmonies on funk, you can put it on R&B, you can mm -hmm. put it on a, a dance tune. And you, what you have is like this common thread that ties all of their original music together so that's what I would say go back and look at your old stuff that you're probably not gonna be selling <laughs> and go and look at it and say what can I take and, and keep like a common thread going through and eventually over time you just figure out that that works or the alternatively you figure out that that doesn't work right and you, you go back to the drawing board what about the new artist that's coming out someone that has not written a song yet just write songs. <laughs> Just write. <laughs> write songs and play them for people. Play them for not your parents. Your parents are not going to give you an accurate view. Mm -hmm. uh, play them for your neighbor. Play them for some dude just walking down the street, like like down here on uh, Georgia Avenue mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Pull out your AirPods and be like, yo, just check this out. Tell me what you think. I mean, I remember uh, a few years ago at, at Bowie Town Center, because I, I live in Bowie. That's where my studio is. And Bowie Town Center, you'll see guys walking around all the time, these rappers with like a sack full of CDs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you want to sell some CDs, like have a have a iPod or something playing your music, play it for people, get their feedback, and, and 
start that conversation because mm -hmm. it's not just about you like it's about you to an extent right but if that translates to your audience then they're willing to pay you for what you're doing and that, right. that's ultimately what you want right so and you got to like study yourself I like to right and that makes perfect sense but I'd also like to add that one of the things that helped me was just you, there are so many sites now that have original music people that are selling beats yeah. So if you just constantly listen to those beats and kind of see what you connect with and then try to write from there. Um, and also Julie Dexter, um, an, an amazing independent artist out of Atlanta, she had shared me, with me that one of the things that, that she does, she, she tries to understand, like for me, I love Jill Scott. So it's like, well, what about Jill Scott? What is it about her music? You have to, you have to figure out what it is with that person's music that you identify with. And then, like, I like the, the percussion, like that sure. soulful beat. So that's good, that's good advice. Yeah, and I mean, what, what you were saying about going online and finding instrumentals and beats and stuff mm -hmm. and, and sort of practicing and sort of vibing over it, um, that's, to my understanding, that's how Eva did a lot of her songs. Mm -hmm. is she just went around looking for really funky songs and yes. really nice like you know modern sounding beats and mm -hmm. then she would just vibe with that and come up with a lyric come up with a little sound here and there yes um, i was actually talking to uh, uh, uh greg gavin and a friend of his tony mm -hmm. um a couple days ago and what what tony was talking about is how he writes songs and what he does is he he uses what he calls gibberish so he'll start a, a groove or a beat going, and then he'll just sort of and just sort of gibber his way through it. <laughs> uh -huh. And then eventually you end up on an and it's like, okay, best. Okay, that's a word. And then uh -huh. you go from there, and it just sort of <laughs> it just somehow evolves. morphs into yes. some song that resembles some sort of something normal that you would listen to. So, yes. Yeah, it becomes a very organic process when you're willing to just gibber your way through it. You know, just make it happen. Just start. Yeah. Yeah. Start and 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 writers will say that too. They'll say, you know, when you're writing a book or a poem or an essay or whatever, just start writing, and you'll probably end up going back and erasing a bunch of that stuff. But just just get something on the mm -hmm. pad, mm -hmm. and then when you look at it, it's like, okay, well, at least I have something there. You got something to work with at that point. Right. So that's so. That's, that's a good segue into writing. So you also mentioned that as far as the writing aspect of it, tell your story. Right. Sure. So let's say someone comes to you because you you collab with different artists in the DC metropolitan Love to, area. Yes. And uh, so they come to you and they might hear a, a beat that they like. How do you help them connect with that? The whole songwriting process. Okay. So my big thing on uh, recording songs, especially when you're in the studio and your vocalist, they have their lyrics ready, or maybe they don't have their lyrics. Right. Maybe they just come in completely blank. Right. What you want to do is you want to come up with, like for me at least, it's a title. Mm. So come up with some unifying thing that this song is about, all right? Mm. Now when you have your title, that gives you a lot of information right off the bat. When you Once you have a title sort of decided, which again, all this is subject mm. to change I later, like but you start with the title, that gives you your chorus basically. Your, your title is going to be what you say in the chorus. Mm -hmm. If it's not, then you need a better title that will also functions as the chorus. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, now you have, okay, how are we going to get to the chorus? So if we have a chorus like, uh, 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 I, I don't know, uh, Listen Vision Radio, all right, that's, that's our chorus. So we want to get there by having a verse that says all the great things about Listen Vision Radio, you know, maybe where, how it was founded and how awesome Wendy Hicks is. I like and that then, song already. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we might be writing that later in the show. Um, so you, 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 you get your verse and that, that <laughs> delivers you to finally Listen Vision Radio. You know, now you're in the chorus. And so the song is pretty much half written at that point. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how I would approach it. Come up with an idea and figure out how to flesh it out to just get something out of that. Mm -hmm. But the title is where it all starts for me. Okay, I like that. We're going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll come right back and, and get to our next topic. What's up, everybody? This is Chief Lee Bars, and you're tuned in to Indie Voice.
into this or we continue the songwriting segment i just like to remind you guys that are watching on listen vision live where the commercials are that could be um your commercial we're looking for sponsors so if you would like to advertise your business please reach me on uh info at wendyrhicks.com and we will be happy to oblige so let's get back to the songwriting portion i really like that idea of uh you know, listen Vision Live and how wonderful Wendy Hicks is. What, what kind of direction, what kind of song can we create from that? <laughs> go-go song right there. 40 bongo players. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so now thank you for, this is the CD, the cover for Manifesto. And also I think we have a picture of it that we can show. The... Um, in terms of some of the stories behind the lyrics, can you share with us um, some of the ideas? All right, so there's a lot of stuff in here about relationships mm -hmm. that I just kind of picked up after <laughs> New relationships? A, lot of, a lot of crashing and burning relationships oh. <laughs> over the years. Okay. Um, okay, so just I'll go through a couple of the relationship stories here. So I see it in your eyes is about I love um, that song too. So what that's about is it's about actually a falling out between me and a very nice young lady. Mm -hmm. And you know, several years goes by, five, six, seven, eight years, and then we we finally meet up and like after so long you still you see it in her eyes. You know the wow. connection is still there. You know like the chemistry that. is still there. So there's that one. Nice. Um, I have work in, which is about the struggle of relationships with uh, work and having jobs and having a career mm -hmm. and trying to maintain your relationship and, and maintain a, a positive, healthy dynamic with your partner or your significant other. Mm -hmm. So that's all about work, but it's also, it, it's kind of a play off of the Isley Brothers' uh, work to do, mm -hmm. where he's mm -hmm. talking about, you know, I got a job and this and that, but I still love you and I still want to come back to you. And so I mm -hmm. kind of flipped it and said, you know, uh, you know, I have a job and I still love you, So, but I expect you to also pull your weight in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So there's this sort of modern, sort of more uh, equality kind of aspect to it. It's sort of, you know, men and women sort of now pretty much supposed to expect it to work and provide an equal share in the relationship. So mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's an exploration of that idea. Um, so that's kind of the relationship stuff. There's a beautiful piano ballad in here. Um, uh, which one is that? I don't know about love. Mm -hmm. And again, my lyrical sarcasm, love ballad where I'm telling you I don't know about love, so it's kind of <laughs> the anti-love love song. Mm -hmm. um, now, the other topics on here, uh, ruination about um, my oh, girlfriend at the time uh, getting drugged at a nightclub and mm -hmm. then dealing with the fallout of that and kind of talking about the types of people that you see in these nightclub environments. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a layer of irony there because it's a club dance sort of rave song mm -hmm. about the dangers of clubs and raves. So um, there's that. Intervention is about heroin addiction. Mm. I grew up uh, in uh, in Bowie, and my circle of friends it was about maybe four or five or six of us growing up in elementary school, mm. and uh, pretty much me and and one other guy are the only ones still alive. So oh my. yeah, heroin addiction it, it's terrible. So because you wouldn't even think in Bowie, like because I grew up well in Largo, not yeah. too too far. You wouldn't think that it would. It would be, it sounds like an epidemic. Well, the thing is, it's, it's, Bowie's very close proximity to the big metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. So you're close to Baltimore, you're close to DC, you're close to Annapolis. It's mm -hmm. pretty much equidistant, it's right in the center. So if you know where to go in Baltimore, it's, you know, 30 minutes down the street. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's been at least, as far as I know, uh, what sort of brought it into Bowie. And uh, I'm just fortunate that I survived and uh, a, a couple of my other friends. Uh, survived that because many of them did not mm. um, that's so that's awful. all about drug addiction and and I'm sort of playing a character of like this addict of like you know uh, freaking out and, and uh, Jones in and all this 
And then in the third verse, I come back in and I'm sort of the, the real me, sort of talking some sense into the character, uh, drug addicted me. So I, I was sort of trying to do like an Eminem thing or like, you know, put on different voices and different yeah. characters. So that, that, was, that was fun. And it's also a super funky beat as well. It's like this SOS kind of really heavy. Uh, funk groove on there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. Better than is about positive thinking mantras that you can tell yourself. I'm better than this. I'm better than that. Whatever mm -hmm. problems you're going through. And um, yeah, I, I, I mean, what is reality? Just, just like me, just being frustrated with, <laughs> with reality and the the way that you know the world can be kind of cruel and harsh and confusing and. Uh, arbitrary and so there's things about that in here too I try to keep my subject matter like I said kind of kind of uh, goofy kind of funny but also it's serious it's rooted in stuff that I've actually experienced mm -hmm. so again trying to find that common thread is why this record exists me just going all over the place all my different influences mm -hmm. but it's still me on the inside of it you know mm -hmm. I like this title a soup took me a minute to pronounce it a super funk a a super funk apocalypse. A super funk apocalypse. <laughs> that's like, a, that's kind of like a, I guess, sort of a, a Parliament funkadelic yes. sort of reference there. You see, you'll hear Rump, like Rumple <laughs> Steel Skin and all these kind of goofy names. Well, um, great. I can't wait to hear that's it. That's actually the track playing right now. Okay, um, I like that. So again, guys, we'll we'll learn more about how we can t can get our copy of Manifesto. So now let's go back to the Facebook article. So we have product in hand because you said, okay, you can't sell anything if you don't have anything to sell, right? Right. So now we have an artist that has, let's talk about one, the artists that are here in the area that are looking to branch out. Because one of the things that you mentioned in the article was that our local artists have gained a level of success because their music is so ingrained in the culture and history of DC and surrounding areas. So what about the artist that wants to extend their audience outside of the city? I think worry about getting your local following down first. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the main reasons why I was able to sell so many of these is because I had my website, www.oadamsmusic.com. Mm -hmm. I have that set up. I have my merchant account. I have a store set up. So mm -hmm. when you go to oadamsmusic.com, there's a link on the page takes you right to the store where you can buy it. Mm -hmm. And so worry about how you're going to deliver your product to you know, your neighborhood, your, your city, your town. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't, like, like a, lo a lot of people don't want to mess with distribution. I'm basically my own distribution company, my own publishing company, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's other services out there. There's CD Baby and uh, uh, DistroKid and TuneCore, all these places mm -hmm. where you can get digital distribution, right. physical. I think CD Baby's the only one that does uh, physical CD right. distribution. Mm -hmm. um, but so you can get that, that handled for you. Now, at that point, when you have your music in the store, mm -hmm. you're able to take that link and go wherever you want with it. Mm -hmm. And so my whole thing is I love to create content, but I also love to do business and sell products. So you, you, you want to fuse these two things together. And if you don't enjoy making content, if you don't enjoy making music, you're not going to get much out of this whole hustle to begin with. Mm -hmm. You have to really just get a kick out of completing a project and just seeing it finished. And that should be a reward enough. But so then you're talking about you want to expand your audience. There's, there's countless resources online to do that. And I would say it, it's a more valuable use of your time to go on to Reddit and go on to Twitter, go on to YouTube, and really start getting some data on your own products, on your own music, on mm -hmm. your content. Mm -hmm. And from that data, you can extrapolate, okay, people in this demographic, people in this gender, people in this age range are most interested in my music. At that point, you can advertise to them. So you right. can retarget that specific audience. They're right. already interested in what you're doing. Right. So it's not a gamble. It's not like you're just taking out an ad and just blasting it all over the place to people who don't care about you. Mm -hmm. You're taking the exact group of people who love what you do, and you're retargeting them, and they're something like 10 times more likely to, 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 to make a purchase. So like, expanding out is just a matter of get a local following and test your content, get your data on that, and then expand out to all the other people that match that description or are kind of in the ballpark of that. And you can go all over the world. It's, it's very easy nowadays. Okay. So, and, and in terms of social media, because there's so many different um, platforms, social media, like 
Twitter, Instagram. Yes. The thing that comes to mind when you talk analytics, um, sounds like you really like YouTube or you're, you prefer YouTube. But in terms of the analytics, does Facebook, do they have a strong analytics? Um, in um, certain types of pages, you have access to a lot of data, especially if you're paying them for an ad campaign. They'll, they'll give you access to all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then even on YouTube, like like YouTube just had this this big controversy recently. They call it the ad apocalypse, where mm -hmm. a bunch of their advertisers wanted to pull their money off because, oh, our, my ads are being shown on controversial videos, and, and we don't want our product associated with that. Well, guess what? When you go on YouTube and you buy a YouTube ad, you can specifically check boxes to have your ad viewed on controversial, violent, <laughs> inappropriate videos so it's like they're saying one thing publicly and doing another thing and actually taking money behind the, behind everybody's back so it's kind of a weird thing but but what I love about all of these platforms regardless of their flaws and their little idiosyncrasies mm -hmm. they all they all give you some amount of data on what you're doing even Twitter you have uh, you have followers you have you're able to create a conversation and go back and forth mm -hmm. uh, Facebook on certain types of pages you have a lot of access to see how many people view this and their demographics. YouTube, same thing. You get extensive analytics on YouTube, and you, they'll give you bar graphs and line plots and all kind of crazy stuff. So yeah, like get on as many of them as you can. Don't burn out on like 50 different platforms, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but get on as many of them as you can. I'd say focus on one initially. Um, I'm not sure about Instagram if they, I'm sure there's an ad component built in there, mm -hmm. but um, some people don't have a bunch of money to just be dumping on ads. So it, as long as you're putting content out there and and replying to your comments, right, and actually mm -hmm. engaging with people instead of like, oh, here's my content, you know, enjoy, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, Pay me. Yeah, e exactly. <laughs> like 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 talk to your fans, talk mm -hmm. to the people who just spent ten bucks on your CD and and ask them what their favorite song is. Either way, you're getting data, and right. from that data, you can ex extrapolate a marketing strategy mm -hmm. that actually makes sense. You're not guessing. You're not right. you know, taking a shot in the dark. Right. So, Okay. That's great advice, because I, I struggle with trying to figure out. I mean, I prefer Facebook, um, but in terms yeah. of fully utilizing like the analytics, I really don't. I, have, I really need to do more research. Uh, so that's good. that's good advice. Well, just look into the features that they have, and you know, it, it, they make it pretty easy to understand. They make it pretty easy to negotiate through. Um, now, to my understanding, you don't get that kind of access on a personal Facebook page, which I'm stupid because I post most of my content on my personal page. But I also have a, a page for my publishing company and for my studio and stuff. So, so on those pages, you can see. Uh, if it's an artist page or if it's a business page, you can have access to all of that. So it's just a matter of taking a look and seeing what you got. Right. And really, it's no point in even looking at it unless you're trying to put together a, a, a targeted ad campaign of, or marketing some particular product. Mm -hmm. But once you go to do that, pretty good information to have, I would say. Right, you know? <laughs> right. Let's talk about budget. So you have an artist that comes to you and they want to, to do a song. What, what are the things that they should consider and approximately, for a single a ballpark figure, how much do you think it would, they would need to come up with in order to, to, from start to finish to get a song released? Well, I, I kind of don't have a strict set of what I charge for a song. Like, it depends on the project. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend to any artist going to any studio or any engineer, what you want to do is have a plan in mind for what you want to do. You're going to the studio. You're not going to the bar. You're not going to the club. <laughs> You're going somewhere to, to do work and, and take a, some sort of piece of audio and cut it into a CD or cut it into a, a, a file of some kind. Mm -hmm. So figure out what are you doing? What are you, are you recording a vocal? Are you recording an instrument? Mm -hmm. Are you making an instrumental song? Decide that first and then then come to your producer or your studio or a guy like me. You know, I get calls from people. They say, I want to come in the studio. It's like, well, for what? Like, <laughs> like what do you want to do? You want to just hang out? You want to just come and like, you know, like, like I don't know. Mm -hmm. So come in with a plan. Call me and say, hey, I want to record a vocal track. Hey, I want to make a instrumental song. I want to make a beat with 808s, like in a style of Drake. Mm -hmm. Have some kind of plan in mind, and then we'll talk about the specifics of how to execute that. Mm -hmm. But 
figure out what you want to do first. Don't just get in the studio and start wasting your engineer's time because then they're not going to want to work with you anyway. So right. keep that rapport up and, and show show whoever you're working with that you have a high standard and, and you want to maintain a certain amount of professionalism. That's great. Great advice. And then the, the, the last portion of what you said in this, this article, again, it was a very long article. Great information and equipped with citations and everything or references at the, at the below it. I take um, no credit for any of those points. <laughs> the credit goes to Ralph Murphy, Gary Vaynerchuk. These kind of guys are the ones that everybody should be listening to. Don't listen to me. You know, I'm not a multimillionaire. I, I didn't take a wine company in a, in, a, in, a, in a basement and turn it into a multi-million dollar business. So mm -hmm. that's, that's Gary V. You go talk to him about that. <laughs> right. So, you know, you're saying, though, to, you know, don't look for excuses not to get started. You know, don't, don't think in your mind that you're not ready or that it's not the right time. And again, ultimately, or don't procrastinate and don't let fear prevent you from moving forward to at least just get started. I mean, the biggest obstacle that I see in like 99.9% .9 of musicians and artists is this right here. Right. It's, it's, it's your own brain. It's, it's you're creating excuses. Why, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. Why this won't work? Why that'll never work? Why you'll never make money doing this? And, and unfortunately, there's this whole culture of this that goes on in bands and groups. And one guy will say, oh, it's so unfair and it's so difficult and it's so oversaturated, it's impossible <laughs> and this and that and it's a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. And then all the other guys in the band start agreeing with you and, and backing you up and reinforcing all these toxic, like self-sabotaging mindsets. Mm -hmm. So like, don't listen to other people in your band that aren't selling records. Like, Listen to people who are actually making money that are, that are moving and shaking here. Right. You know? Don't, don't, don't just, because it's convenient, it makes you feel good in the moment. Mm -hmm. you, you have to get over yourself and right. just say, let's, let's do it and, and see what happens. You know, it, it's, it's the real world, you mm -hmm. know. It, it's, people want to stay in their basement and their comfort zone and that's fine. But you're talking about expanding your audience out. Like you need to expand yourself out before you can expand your audience, your product, and anything else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Great. So tell folks how they can stay connected with you. All right. Well, uh, my website, oadamsmusic.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Facebook. Just search up Owen Adams. I'm on SoundCloud. Uh, SoundCloud slash Owen Adams. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube, my YouTube channel, Owen Adams Music. Please subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. I'm sure I'll get a huge bump in subscriptions. Yes, and views after this, yes. Go there after right this. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's that. And pretty much if you want to stay as current as possible with the content that I'm putting out and the information, I do lessons, I do lectures, I do... Uh, things like this and, mm -hmm. and podcast style videos um, that would be YouTube mm -hmm. YouTube and Facebook is where all it's like the, the centerpiece of my content okay so yeah that's where I that's where I keep in touch with my fans and my audience and, and I keep the conversation going with them okay so again like when I put a video out there I want to get those comments and, and discuss them discuss with them uh, what's going on and what's coming up next and mm -hmm. it's, it's fun like you can't just put something out there and then just think everybody's just gonna like it and not. You got to talk to them. You got to kind of sell it a little bit. Right. So. Okay. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, you know, I'm sure that you know those of you that are watching, you were able to identify with some of the things that we talked about, and hopefully you've learned something. I've I'm learned a lot. <laughs> you know. Just <laughs> hopefully, you know. Um, again, feel free to reach out to Owen if you have more questions. Um, Kevin Kojo Prince, we missed you today. Yeah, I'm you know, Kevin today. Ke you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> I think Owen did a great job as uh, the sit-in co-host for today. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'd like to thank DZ, our broadcast engineer to the stars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin Williams, thank you. Producer of the show. Again, I'm Wendy Hicks. And and uh, thank you again, Owen. I appreciate you coming out. I appreciate so you the guys, opportunity. Thank you. And stay connected and make sure you support local artists, guys. We're going to end the show with Uncle Charlie. Bye. Oh, yeah. My life is a gift from you. Blessed from heaven, that's for sure. So every day I live, give thanks to you. Oh, 
I haven't been perfect, and that's okay. And you still show love my way, yeah. Please don't leave me stay, cause I know the sun doesn't shine, the rain doesn't fall, and there wouldn't be a twinkle, twinkle little star. And just like we have winter, spring, and summer, fall, I can always count on you because you never let me down. You've always been around for me, and my trust for you will never leave. It will never leave because you know my destiny. So I believe. Every day my faith gets stronger and Knowing you're there, I hang on a little longer Sometimes life gets a little hard Hey, your times are tough, so hard to bear I get weak sometimes, I feel you really don't care But when I open my eyes and look out the window And see that the sun doesn't shine and the rain doesn't fall 